Here is another classroom management essential. Be respectful. But first, here's a joke to help whet your appetite. What does a thesaurus eat for breakfast? A synonym roll. <laughs> it seems simple, right? The way we respond will determine how our students react. And there are really only two ways of dealing with students who aren't behaving as we want them to. Fairly and unfairly. Not surprisingly, it doesn't matter what our idea of fair is. It is what the students think that counts. We all know what our definition of unfair is, but students can often see many other things as unfair. Embarrassing them, picking on them, scolding them, and shouting at them will all be considered unfair and obviously will result in stress, arguments, and even tantrums. In some cases, a student will feel equally persecuted just by the way we speak to them or even just the way we're looking at them. As we all know, body language and facial expressions play a huge part in communication. And on more than one occasion, I've witnessed a student launching into a physical assault on a member of the staff for nothing more than a raised eyebrow, yelling, I fucking hate you. I hate the way you look at me. Now you may want to try to fix all of these triggers. Good luck with that. But I think you'll have a lot more success in navigating around these triggers, in figuring out what might set a student off, and then trying to avoid that behavior. You don't want to walk on eggshells with your students, but you also don't want to crack them for no reason. Like an eggshell, your students' minds and psyches are fragile, whereas you're an adult, hopefully a mature adult, and you have much more control of your body and your mind and your emotions, and you should try to keep as level ahead as possible during your interactions. The odd thing about students is that Young people are experts at reading our inner feelings, but they have little control over their own emotions. So when they believe that we dislike them or have something against them, their reactions can often seem extreme. The problem with one can escalate very quickly. When a whole group of students feel we are being confrontational or unfair, the problem suddenly becomes 30 or 35 times worse. The following are a few ways that I express my respect to my students. If we minimize or eliminate the opportunities and excuses students have to argue with us, it makes classroom life much easier on everybody. And we can do this by treating students with respect, firmly but fairly. When we give them instructions or deliver consequences, we've got to make sure that it's done in a way that all students can accept. Giving clear, concise directions means that your instructions can't be misinterpreted. And you might want to use the analogy of giving students clear tracks to follow, like a railroad car. When I ask them to do something in this way, there is much more of a chance that I will get them where I want them to go, or have them doing what I want them to be doing. And it also decreases the chance of an argument. It's simply a case of succinctly explaining to students exactly and specifically what you want them to do. Here's an example of how I might narrate my instructions. Instead of yelling at a student, Tim, stop it! I'd simply ask, Tim, please stop tapping your pen on the desk and put it down. Or, Sally, please move your legs under your desk and put your feet on the floor. Or, Sarah, please look me in the eyes and answer me yes or no. These are small, simple changes that narrate the type of behavior that you want to see. Asking students to confirm that they've heard you, that they understand you, and that they know what to do next is really helpful in preventing the dreaded, I didn't understand, or I didn't hear you, or even, I didn't know you were talking to me. So make sure that you ask students specific questions 
that require detailed answers to show that they know what they're doing next. You also may want to consider swapping please for thank you. Giving a direct instruction and following it with a thank you implies that you expect the student to do as you say. Johnny, stop talking, turn around, and finish your diagram. Thank you. Sounds much better than, Johnny, please stop talking, please turn around, and please finish your diagram. Doesn't it? In conclusion, try to remember that you're a teacher, not a student. That these arguments and quarrels are for students to have, not for teachers to have with students. And as the great James Baldwin said, children have never been very good at listening to their elders, but they have never failed to imitate them. <laughs>